listening to KFWB News Talk 980. My name is Les Brown, and we thank you so much for joining us. You know, you have something special. You've got greatness within you. And, and as you listen to this program, it's a different kind of feel, different kind of energy. And we encourage you to engage in positive conversation. Do you realize that just by engaging in three positive conversations a week, that has a positive impact on your health? This is evidence-based and scientifically proven. Absolutely. And the same thing with negative conversations. If you engage in negative conversations, that has an adverse effect on your health. In fact, a study was done that indicated that one minute of anger weakens your immune system for four to five hours. Wow. Just think about that. One minute of anger weakens your immune system for four to five hours. Now, one minute of laughter boosts your immune system for over 24 hours. So when you listen to this program because I laugh so much and I cause you to laugh, you won't get sick for 10 years. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, listen, we're talking about overcoming the hurdles and the challenges of life, being flexible and adaptable and, 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 and being versatile. What is it that you've had to do to tackle the challenges facing you in today's workplace? Hello, Jenny. How are you in Los Angeles? Tell me, what is it that you had to do and, and, and what hurdles did you have to overcome to be where you are? Jenny, are you there? Hello? Jenny going well, what? Oh, you can hear me now. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, thank um, you. We have to overcome being versatile. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. We, in, we are, uh, we work for a phone company, and we are not to use all the resources that we have, and we are not to help those fellow employees because that is not part of our job description. Even though our tools and everything that we have is in our hands and our power and it takes probably two minutes, three minutes tops, we cannot do that. Why is that? Because it is not in our job description. <laughs> wow. That it's is horrible. weird. It doesn't, ex it only doesn't make us. any sense at all. You know, in our morale doesn't affect our callers when we have to t turn them away and say, I'm sorry, you reached the wrong department. You have to go somewhere else and wait for five more minutes, and maybe the solution will be in their hands, but more than likely it will not. But it also affects our customers. And, and tell me, how does it affect the people in your work environment? How do they feel about that? Well, they're extremely frustrated. Um, they understand that it's not us, but they are so frustrated with the way this whole um, the new system is coming through, which is coming from the higher-ups. Before, everybody loved working where I'm at. Everybody, all the customers loved us, and now it's just they hear our name and they just want to go away. They want to tell us horrible things, and they just want to let us know what horrible customer service we have to offer, and it's very sad. And it's come to the point where everybody in our job, you know, our current job location is thinking that maybe they have come to this, you know, plan of theirs so that their jobs, our jobs, will get moved out of state. Wow. Well, Jenny, here's what we know. You, uh, you have the ability to create something totally different for yourself, to move your place, yourself to a place where you're celebrated and not tolerated. So be about the business of asking yourself, what is it that's keeping me here and what is it I need to do to reinvent myself or expand my talents, abilities, and skills and create a different environment for myself work-wise because you deserve that and you can make that happen, okay? Oh, yes. We, we try to be as positive and laugh and, you know, laugh it off and say, okay, we're going to be here till we have to be here. And then... Yeah, you don't have to be there. See, everybody has a rightful place. Everybody has a rightful place. And places are more important than people. God made a place for us before he made people. And you want to be in a place that resonates with who you are as a person. Okay, and sure. you can make that happen. Listen, thank you so much for calling. I want to talk to George on, on, on line two. George in North Hollywood. Now, you, uh, yes, oh, George, George left. One of the things that, that what we know, and many times we get so caught up in doing something, we feel like we have to do it. No, no, you don't have to do anything but die and pay taxes, as my mother used to say. You have a choice, and 
And you have to challenge yourself to think that you can make something happen for yourself beyond where you are right now, and you don't have to be a volunteer victim. And that's real. And I'm not just making that up. I, I remember working on a job, and a guy asked me, he said, you don't like it here, do you? And I said, no. He said, then why do you come? I said, what do you mean, why do I come? I've got bills. I've got a family. I've got kids. He said, Les, there's still no excuse. You're a volunteer victim. So what do you mean I'm a volunteer victim? He says, nobody's holding a gun to your head. Nobody's making you come in. You come in complaining. You're angry. You come in late asking what time it is, what time it is and you're already late. And I said, whoa, okay, oh. I had to think about that. Jorge, how are you? Thank you so much for calling back in North Hollywood. Yes, hi, Les. Thanks you for uh, the call. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a dentist myself right now, so I'm going over what I did when I started looking for a job. Mm -hmm. When I was a, a student, they told me, don't ask for a lot of money. Even if you have to volunteer, just get that experience. So I competed against five other dental technicians at that time. I got the job even though they had more experience and they were faster. But I went in with a different attitude. I wanted to learn. He asked me, how much do you want to get paid? I said, I know I'm not that fast. I know I'm not that good. I will work for free until I get the experience. He said, no, I will pay you. What do you want? Well, at that time, the um, minimum wage was $1.50 an hour. I was bold, and I said, okay, if you're going to pay me, I'll ask for $2 an hour. He was mm -hmm. so impressed. He says, I'll give you two twenty-five an hour. But what I did with my attitude is I was going to work for free just to get that experience. Mm -hmm. Then I would ask after a while, I'd like to get paid. If he says, no, we still don't uh, have enough room for you, well, at least I would have had the job experience, and then I could have gone somewhere else. And now as a doctor... I now teach at the East LA Occupational Center, and this is what I tell the new recruits that are coming in. I tell them, don't go in there expecting a lot of money. These girls go through these dental assistant programs, and they're told they'll get 15 to $20 an hour just to get them to join their group. But that's not the reality. So when they come out, out of that, those programs, they come in and say, how much do you want? Oh, I want eighteen dollars an hour with no experience. You're right, and so they're disillusioned when they're rejected. Exactly. So it's it's wrong for these schools to be promising these uh, high uh, wages, which is wrong. But when I go to teach, I tell them, don't expect more than maybe minimum wage, or get ten dollars an hour just to get in there. Yeah, get your foot in the door so you can begin to work your way around and learn all that you possibly can so you can have some value and experience and a resume you can take someplace else. Yes, and uh, when they come to my office, because my office in North Hollywood, will um, I will train them. Now, I tell them, okay, you're going to be doing these things. Well, some of my other staff, they tell them, could you go ahead and, and maybe clean some trays or file some charts? And I have some of them who actually say, well, I think go to dental assistant school to do that. <laughs> Those are the, the students that I write up, and they don't get a job. They right. don't pass my program because of their attitude. So They've got to be willing. So what you're saying is they've got to be willing to pay their dues. They have to do not only that, but they have to do willing to do things that isn't in just because they're a dental assistant doesn't mean they can't clean trays, they can't sweep, they can't throw... You do have me. When I was starting back in the... Oh, my goodness. I'm Listen, I've, I've got I've got to get out of this, but listen, I, I got your point, and I want to thank you so very much. You're saying you've got to be willing to sacrifice and be versatile and be flexible. Thank you so much for calling in. You're listening to KFWB News Talk 980. 